Hi. What's happening? Not much. I'm just lying, lying in bed, trying to figure out a way to make money because the government cut me off. Really? Yeah, I, I they said that I need to fax some proof that I made over five thousand dollars last this year, last year, or else I can't get any more payments. You need proof that you've made over five grand. Yeah. What kind of proof you need? Uh, like bank statements and. I don't know. They, they, they have a whole thing, a whole thing that I, I copied and I have to fax it over to them. And the worst thing is I was supposed to pay for, I was supposed to buy a van on Friday and I called on Monday to get my payment and then they wouldn't put me through and they, they wouldn't do it. So I tried to figure it out online. I tried to figure it out and I went in through all my bank statements and tried to figure out how much money I made and what was going on with my taxes. And then I, I went again and they also said that I couldn't get it. So now I have to figure out how to make $700 by tomorrow. <laughs> so wait, if, if you don't have 5,000, they don't give you money. So if you're really poor, you can't even get any money. Mm -hmm. What the fuck was that? Well, it's because it's to prove that you're, you're part of the working class and that you're putting money in the economy or part of the system, I guess because you're getting money from the system. So you have to prove that you 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 slave away for it as well. Uh. I don't know. I think if everyone on the streets that hadn't made over $5,000 got these payments and people would get their shit together because they'd actually have the capability to be able to do that for the first time in their life. So the people who didn't have, wow. So the poor stay really poor. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh, there's one payment you can get it's five hundred dollars and you can just call or like do it online and they put five five hundred dollars in your bank account regardless of how much money you made which is nice i saw that at the food bank <laughs> but regardless everyone else is making like twenty thousand and over twenty thousand with these payments a year and people that hadn't made over five thousand dollars are just getting 500 bucks but So, have you come up with a solution? To making money? Yeah. I've been working, I've been teaching English again. So I had like a full schedule and I was teaching for a couple of days straight. And then I realized how exhausting it was. <laughs> and then I got kicked off and I can't work for three days because I would sleep in and show up late for class. <sighs> this is ESL? Yeah, it's like teaching teaching adults around the world conversational English. Oh, so you got a message from Jordan? Uh, yeah, he sent me a picture of a Q-tip and said that like me and Lindsay are gonna dance on it, something. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Secret plan is 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 happening. <laughs> yeah, he said no. He's he's building a dance party there, so me and Lindsay have a place to shake the crazy out. <laughs> Some things have not worked. So <laughs> there's big things happening. It all starts with a Q-tip. And what about Fairy Creek? I don't know. I haven't been back there. I, I I felt like I wasn't I wasn't mentally in the best state to be able to be of service to other people. And also, I feel like I was being taken advantage of a lot by like Tree and David, um, and I got really pissed off. And <laughs> what happened with Tree? Nothing really happened with Chi. I don't know. I just, it's just him not holding himself accountable for disrespecting other people and upsetting people. And I don't know, I, I, he made, I saw this yesterday, he made this Facebook status saying that he was, what was it? He was being repressed because he, he was told to wear a mask when he was going to Pacific Rim for free acupuncture. And someone's like, you're getting a free service. Like, just, just respect the people that are giving you a free service. You're only in there for an hour. And he was like, this is repression and like I faint if I wear a mask and all this stuff. And I was like, man, he's just, I don't know. 
I don't know, they're just wanting to borrow my car all the time and I'm the one paying gas and it just gets, it gets to a long line of just like, fuck off. Hey, I'm on the call. What are you looking for? Oh, it's a master. It's a video, okay. No, that's not yours, that's mine. That was a long one. You got a long one? I don't know what your long one is. I'll take one then. Oh yeah, just go go for it. If it's if it asks you, then it's just gonna you know, someone catches me. Then I can say it's took it, right? Yeah, just don't ask me anymore. Okay, bye. Yeah. I'm visiting my family. I've been with my family for a week. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I thought I was having a breakdown and I, I hopped on the bus to go see my family and I've been staying with them ever since. <laughs> retreat it is a retreat it's, a, it's such a good retreat i wake up for my mom my mom wakes me up she goes do you want coffee do you want tea do you want me to make you breakfast um what do you need she's like oh you need groceries let's go to the store i'll drive you there like oh you're going to bed do you want sleepy time tea do you want this and then everyone's like how are you and you need some money you need some snacks need this and like wow i I, for, I forgot how bad i am at taking care of myself and it feels really nice <laughs> Feeling very spoiled. I see you're getting hair now. Yeah, I'm gonna, I have a lot of hair now. I mean, not really, it's like a whole lot, but it's definitely more than it was. Yeah, but you've you've left the realm of baldness. I left bald town. <laughs> did, you, did you notice a difference? In what? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I need to get a background. I'll do blur. Can I do blur? Oh, I have to download it. Ugh. I don't know. How's how's the secret plan in Yorkton? I just did uh, four one-hour sessions with the four ladies. Uh, wow. Including Lindsay's mom as the, the step of design your ideal job and sort of we're going to go step by step and these ladies are amazing i mean they're they're like they're so ready for this like wow. they, they are so set up to sort of change the world like the, these are the people that are going to change the world you know like uh they're and and it's it's the first time getting a team of four to use let me show you the map but there's a a specific kind of map that is the background for having a team of four where you have one who's like a designer one who's a organizer one who's a builder and one who's a promoter cool. and, and they fit in each mm. spot and so Lori and i have known each other for about 10 years and she you know we've been sort of hoping at different times she said she wanted to build a, a shared knowledge community but you know, it's in groups of people, but they're just not on the same wavelength as her. Like she's, she's way ahead of her time in Yorkton. Yeah. And now she's with three other women that are of the same mindset. Oh, that's powerful. So that's a huge difference. So they're, they're, they're like embracing the maps. We did a, you know, they did a, a synergizer type thing went really well. Like they love the divination, right? Like they, you have to have people who are willing to think outside the box, right? And it, anyone who's still in the normal system, none of this stuff is going to work. Like the, this, this is a transfer, transformative system. So just, just participating is going <laughs> to fuck you up. <laughs> but, all, but they're all changed catalysts. Like they're all people who, you know, who want the world a better place kind of thing, you know? Yeah, that's wonderful. So this map, you know, it's like the one person is sitting here at cycles, that's the designer. And then one person is down here at events and that's the organizer, that's Sylvia. And then over here is Christy at actions and that's the builder. And then Lori is at uh, the conversations and promoter. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this, this the, the latest uh, one is a principal. Mm -hmm. She's at the designer and it's, it's like, they're powerful like these are these are like really really powerful like when you really get on a team that you fit on 
right? Yeah. Like, like, like their whole, like, I mean, the thing is like the person who's, who's here, Sylvia is very organized, right? And, and like mm -hmm. for someone like Laura, who's got a lot of ideas and she's, she's, she's in that promotion mode, you need someone who's going to assist you, right? You need someone who's going to, you're getting all these things occurring, you need to pass it to somebody who can organize it, but you may not be good at doing it, but you're great at attracting the people in, right? Yeah. So, so without a team, you know, we tend to falter kind of thing. Yeah, I think that's been the biggest run in my fall of mental health is feeling great to have a team. <laughs> having a team makes the world of a difference. Like having that kind of support for your ideas and having people to support you and make things happen and make that change and to know that you're safe to do that and supported in that kind of way and that you're held for that and your traits and qualities is so valuable and so important. Yeah. And the, and the thing is, there's a there's a youth team on the shared knowledge community. Like, let's say you're on the youth team, you know, for the most part, most younger people are not that organized. You know, they're not, they got tons of energy, they're brilliant. And, you know, but there's a kind of, you know, the structure that older people give is useful, but generally there's a rebellion against it, right? Because you're rebelling against your family, but at some point you have to find your place. And so it's, it's difficult, right? To sort of get going in something that's good for you because all these other old paradigm businesses, you know, they're not necessarily built for someone like you. Yeah. Definitely cried about that a lot in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> Definitely struggling with that right now, trying to do my taxes and deal with the government. Definitely struggling with that when I told my family all the great ideas I had that they told me were never going to happen and bad ideas. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's important to have that organization and structure. Yeah. I mean, if I look at when I was your age, I was just coming out of McGill. I mean, I had no idea about conceptual maps. I mean, I, you know, you, you see them, but it wasn't like some working entity within me. I mean, I, mm -hmm. but if someone had been able to teach me and show me and, and use it, like the rest of my life would have been very different, you know, compared mm -hmm. to a lot of things happen as a result of circumstances rather than you actually planning or designing what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's integrating that structure and taking that time to sit down with it and actually focus on it. A lot of time, I mean, I feel so scattered and I'm like, well, this is here, this is here, this is here, and this is here. And I can like do all the writing and do all the things. And then when it actually comes to implement, in, implementing it and integrating it, it's like my whole world changes every single moment and then everything collides. That's very good. organization and structure. You seem... Uh... You seem like you come to another place though. Like currently? Yeah, just energetically, just kind of, uh, I guess, being home or? Something's going on with me. I'm not sure what it is, but I feel like a hollow shell of a person. Everyone's like, oh, you changed. And like, wow, you're so much more grounded and da 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 da. But I just, I feel really really drained in some kind of way and I feel like I'm like shifting from like a, a heavy shifting to a heavier version of myself from some kind of like sorrow or something that's happening I don't feel very light I feel very very heavy uh, well it I mean you've been through quite a lot right like it's uh it's good to go home and, and feel supported right at least physically Maybe not emotionally mm -hmm. in your dreams, but it's nice to have family around. Yeah, and I, I forgot what it was like to like live with people that know you really well. Like I feel like I'm so isolated in my apartment just with my one roommate. That uh, you know, coming here, I would like run out and like scream. Like I realized I, I made a bunch of money on Bitcoin and I made a bunch of money on um, GameStop and I thought I was really broke. And then I checked the stock market for a couple months. And I was like ran in the kitchen and started dancing and like doing this little snap and like running around in circles being like, I made money on GameStop. And it's like running around the house and doing doing little kick flips. And I, I realized that I don't I don't have that kind of space at my home. So that's that's been really nice. <laughs> Well, how much time did you spend with Tree? Tree? I just I just spent a week with him at Fairy Creek. I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel I feel a lot of anger 
and resentment toward David and the dynamic that we had, um, him knowingly, um, him knowing that I, you know, I had a partner and all that kind of stuff and going on. And I felt like he was really pushing my boundaries and not really respecting that, but like showing up at my house unattended. And like, there was times where he would, you know, come over and he would just open up the fridge and start like making stuff. And just a lot of not really understanding different social cues, which is why I'm used to it. But like, we can't open the door fully because the cat comes out and he would just walk out and like open the door fully and just stand there and like open apart things on the deck and like sit around and like climb through the window windows and like it's just just so much that I really wish I could hold space for that but I, I couldn't in that kind of environment and I feel like you know if it was anyone else's space I'd be like yeah I fucking do it dude <laughs> but not in my home and just just I don't know he still has my car Sandwich Police called my dad today I don't know what's going on there but the only person I know that lives in Sandwich is David so I really hope he didn't get a car accident with my car and I, you know I just I, he's had my car for over a month now and I can't pay for my insurance anymore and I'm not even driving my car. I don't have any money. Like it's just, I just feel really taken advantage by him and Tree. And then Tree called me yesterday to ask if he could borrow my car for a garden project. And <laughs> so David, the the honeymoon is over, so to speak. It's all over. <laughs> I don't know. When I was at Port, when I was in Port Renfrew, I was so sad. I mean, Nigel had just broken up, and I went for a drive because it was in the pouring rain the whole time, and I was getting really sad. And I was on a couple hours of sleep, so I went for a drive and I got some food. And I came back, and the first thing she said to me was, "I didn't know you were a glamper." And then David went into the back of my car and went to my takeout containers and was checking if there was any food for him. I feel like I'm in this really big crossroads right now where I'm like, I'm, I'm feeling sick of Victoria. I'm feeling like pretty sick of like my life. I'm feeling really sick of, I don't know, the type of people that I've been spending my time around. And also I'm wondering what my next step is for, for like work and career. I'm feeling sick of relationships. I'm feeling sick of myself. Um, like, I feel like I've spent the last year like dawdling and I haven't been focusing on any of my goals or like any forms of like income or anything with career. And I've just been like feeling coddled by this government money that gets me going and just, you know, this universal income and the, the great reset and everything like that. I feel like I've fallen into it. I feel like I've lost track of my spiritual path. And I feel like, I don't know, there's some fucking flora in my pineal gland. And I'm just feeling like I just want to eat all this sugar and like cry in a park. And I don't know. I'm feeling done with like spiritual people in my life because a lot of time I feel like, I don't know, I've just been spending time with Tree and David. I'm just, I'm feeling, I'm feeling really, really sick of myself. Like I'm, I'm not really feeling good about my apartment. I'm not really feeling good about, you know, where I'm at, where I'm living, like what's going on. I need to make a really big change or something because I'm really unhappy. And so I think I was just going to, I was going to get this van and then convert the van, put in my notice and just, you know, travel around BC and stuff like that for the summertime. Um, but now I can't afford the van and I can't afford anything. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like a hollow fucking shell of a person. I called my counselor. I hadn't seen her in four years to have an appointment with her. Um, oh, I just found out that this person will sell the van for cheaper than I thought they would. So I can actually afford it. Cool. I don't know. Some, something's going on. I don't feel like myself. <laughs> well, I mean... You've, you've been through a lot, right? I mean, you're... Oh, seems like a long time since we chatted. It's been a really hard couple of weeks for me. It's been a really, really hard. Like, I thought I had borderline personality disorder. So I started, like, doing all these diagnoses on myself. And then I thought I might have bipolar or, like, some kind of thing going on because every time that I would get really close with Nigel or something would happen, there'd be, like, the snap of my personality and I'd start getting really aggressive and I'd go into black and white thinking and I would have, like, all of these kind of not very good mental characteristics. So I started falling into this kind of self-deprecating of, like, I'm fucked and I have this, like, mental disorder. And so I started going into this whole time of, like, all the times people would call me crazy 
over over the last <laughs> over the last lifetime. I was thinking when I left Vipassana, and this guy's like, "You're kind of crazy, but it's cool. It's cool. It's cool." And I started thinking that my friend was always talking about me to one of his his partners, and she was like, "Wow, you talk to a lot of girls, don't you?" And he was like, "No, just one, but." She's got a lot of personalities <laughs> and just this, this whole kind of thing of like, maybe I've been through, like, I don't know, just, just really deconstructing my personality of who I am and then trying to throw everything that I thought of myself in the trash. I feel like all of my views and my tower, my tower is completely fallen over and I'm really glad I'm with family because I don't know who I am anymore. <laughs> Did you check your chart at all, your astrological chart? I mean, I should. I know Pisces Pisces season was really hard for me. It was definitely very, very spacey. Um, I don't know. Is there something specific going on with the astro astrological charts right now? Well, just I guess it just depends on your own. Uh, let me just uh, stick you in here. And I've I've missed all of all of the work I was supposed to do. I was supposed to do a class um, yesterday uh, with Lindsay for the somatics. And then I missed my dream workshop with Sarah. And then it's like all, all of the things I've planned have just, just gone, like, gone through the, gone, gone. Oh, so you missed the dream. Cause that's, that's a really, uh, she's really good, eh? I mean, she, I think that would really help you. Well, the thing is like, I sent her a message for 20 minutes before the workshop started to ask for the link for the Zoom class. And she, she I guess she emailed it to everyone else, <laughs> um, but she didn't email it to me. So she had done the class and didn't log into her Facebook so I couldn't get on. But she's, she sent me, sending me the, the recording of it and then I can follow the recording to catch up. Was this the first or the first or the second? This is the second. So you, you you missed two classes of the six. Yeah, but she's she's sending me the she's sending me the recordings of both of them. Okay. Um, when were you born? March 9th, two thousand. What time? Uh, 6 30 p.m. Where? Uh, Nanaimo. Have you ever studied astrology much or like what's? Yeah, I, I spent a couple of years extensively studying astrology, but I haven't really hopped on it too much anymore. I didn't really go into the houses. That was the one thing I didn't go into. Oh, you, you're in a Saturn square mood. What does that mean? It's a bitch. It's a real bitch. What does that mean? Uh, this period can be quite a difficult time for your personal domestic life. On the psychological level, you may feel lonely and isolated from others. You may feel depressed and undeserving of love. Sometimes you remembered past actions may make you feel guilty that you have not lived up to your own expectations. Externally, this influence can create difficulties in personal relationships, especially with women, because your emotional communication seems to be cut off. Your job may make demands that conflict with your domestic responsibilities so that you are forced to neglect one or the other. Your parents may also be a source of concern at this time. The conflict at this time is between the structure of your ego, your sense of individuality, 
and uniqueness and your need to, for connections and roots. Somehow it is difficult to be yourself and to do what you must to maintain your relationships and get much needed emotional support and reinforcement from your loved ones. These elements of your life are not truly in conflict for they are complementary principles that need to be properly balanced with each other. The problem is that one element has gotten out of control at the expense of the other. So a time of readjustment is at hand. This situation is the underlying cause of the loneliness and depression that often accompanies, accompany this influence. You may have to take important changes in your life priorities. You may have to de-emphasize your work in favor of your emotional personal life, or you may have to break off a relationship that has interfered unnecessarily with your work. In either case, you must restore the balance between these two aspects of your life so that your life will run smoothly again. Wow, when did that start? Uh, Mid-February 2021 until the beginning of December 2021. Oh, come on, that's rough. Why is it so long? It's, yeah, Saturn's slow. It's a bit like Saturn's square moon is a, it's a tough one. Wow, fuck, that's terrible. That explains a lot, actually. But now it's hitting me harder. I feel like maybe it started and life was really busy. And then I, my, it was started taking such a toll on me. And I kept avoiding it. Now it's like my, my breakdown. <laughs> then there's another one here, Neptune Square, Midheaven, apparent defeats. Um, end of March 2021 until January 2023. Oh, great. <laughs> this, What's time, that one? this time in your life is like to be confusing and full of doubt and fear if you are not very secure about your life direction. You will ask fundamental questions about what you're trying to do with your life as a whole. And if you, like many people, are not living for yourself and your own objectives, you will probably conclude that what you are doing is worthless and pointless. Even at best, you will question your planned course. In dealing with others, you may find it difficult to stand up for your own position because you're questioning it so much yourself. You may allow yourself to become the victim of other people simply because you lack the confidence to fight back. But a far worse effect of this influence is that you might get into a routine of making yourself seem to be the victim in order to gain other sympathy. It is difficult to take responsibility when you're feeling insecure. For the same reason, there's a strong temptation to avoid direct confrontation with others for fear that you cannot stand up to them. Therefore, you may try to get what you want from people in covert or subversive ways, usually involving some kind of dishonesty. Needless to say, this will only worsen your insecurity, not give you more confidence. But all of the above concerns the worst side of this influence, which does have something positive to teach you. Even as you suffer apparent defeats, you may discover that what you're losing is not really anything significant. You may learn that the needs of your ego are not what your need, real needs are, are at all. Under this influence, some persons find a capacity for selfless action and spiritual self-denial that makes it impossible for them to ever lose in a way that hurts them. In that case, you will learn that there is nothing really to lose. This influence can be the gateway to a very, very highly evolved spiritual understanding. It is quite likely that you will become increasingly involved with spiritual teachings and disciplines. However, it is possible to go off the deep end spiritually, and this influence may very well delude you into doing so. But in the long run, this is one of its less dangerous traps. Uh, here's, wow. some, here's something. Saturn sextile Pluto on target. Beginning of April 2021 until mid-January 2022. During this time, you will be able to withstand great tests of strength if you have to. Your own power and internal strength form a structure that can withstand considerable difficulty. You can work hard and focus tremendous energy on the task before you. Within yourself, you have some understanding of the for forces that make you an individual. You know exactly what you can demand of yourself, and you push yourself to the limit, but not beyond. Consequently, this can be a time of great achievements. At the same time, you will voluntarily restrict the focus of your energies, which makes them even more effective. You understand what area to work on, so your focused energy hits exactly the right target. Fortunately, this principle applies to work that you do within yourself as well as in the external world. In the outer world, the manifestations of this influence are many and varied. First, you will probably work harder than you have in many years, and the work will be extremely productive. People will see that your achievements have grown directly out of your inner being, that they are a product of your own growth. In your work, your employers will see that you apply yourself with unusual diligence to the task at hand, and they will be favorably impressed. They will recognize that you are someone to be reckoned with. This may well be a time of prof professional advancement. 
Mm. But here's another one. Jupiter conjunct Venus. That's a very nice one. Elegance and taste. Beginning of April 2021 until mid-December 2021, this influence helps you to smooth over all difficulties in your relationships, as well as to promote friendship and give you a strong desire for happy and peaceful times. You enjoy being with and talking with friends and will probably attend or hold social, several social gatherings during this time. You may also be the center of attention for some reason, and you will enjoy basking in the limelight. This influence occasionally will bring a new love interest in your life. If it does and other factors are equal, the relationship should prove to be an unusually successful one in which you both grow a great deal, in which there's an excellent balance between love and freedom. Such a relationship will be devoid of jealousy or pettiness to an unusual extent. The same energy affects existing relationships so that you are able to relate to loved ones with great ease. Because you are concerned with the larger issues in your relationship, you are not about to cause trouble over any problem that is not extremely important. And such a problem is not likely to surface during this time. At this time, your taste is likely to become more elegant and you may be tempted to buy something that's very expensive or fancy. At the worst, it might even be gaudy or tasteless. In fact, one of the few real dangers to watch out for under this influence is the tendency to waste or squander money or other resources. Depending upon your own state of mind, however, this influence can also bring in money and increase your resources. Whichever way it goes, it should be well under your control. You have a strong desire to surround yourself with beauty. Sordid or ugly surroundings are much harder than usual for you to bear, so make an effort to avoid them. You are concerned with the beautiful side of, at, of life at this time, and you should do everything to expose yourself to it. Uh -huh. Jeez. Okay. Well, a lot of things happened in February and April that are going on for the next couple of years. Wow. Oh. Great. Big changes. You got another one here. Uranus conjunct Saturn. Wow. Everything's in conjunct now, apparently. Uh, conflict of principles. End of May 2021 until end of April 2022. At this time in your life, structures you thought were dependable and permanent will be threatened by sudden events. It is often a time of great tension and sudden releases of tension. This influence almost always represents a serious conflict of principles. On the one hand, there is your reality structure, those aspects of existence that you believe to be truly real, unchanging, material, indefinite, the inevitable circumstances of life that must be accepted by anyone who claims to be realistic. This influence contradicts this structure by causing sudden changes in areas you wouldn't, you don't expect to change. And the more definite you think your situation is, the more rigid and inflexible your idea of reality, the more shocking your experiencing of this influence is likely to be. Usually tension has been building up for many years in several areas of your life. These tensions are more, more, most commonly the result of the little compromises that we all make between what we want out of life and what we feel we can get. But some of these compromises may violate your inner integrity, even though you don't realize it. Subconsciously, you're aware of it, however, and a force for change begins to operate that eventually will try to overflow through the limiting aspects of your life. It begins to surface as an unbearable tension between your desire to be free of restrictions and your fear of insecurity and change. Eventually, you get to the point that something has to give, which happens suddenly. People usually respond to this influence with sudden actions that surprise others because they happen without warning and are apparently unpremeditated. You may break off an unsatisfactory relationship, marriage, or business partnership, leave a job that has become oppressive, or suddenly break away from something else that has become a burden. Ultimately, no matter how disruptive this influence seems, it is a force for good because it clears away those built-up structures that are holding you back. So that's another big one. Yeah, it seems like they're all big ones. Yeah. I think really intense and really, really heavy. Yeah. So, I mean, to me, usually if I'm in these deep depressions or something, um, and you might want to write, did you write down Saturn square moon? No, I don't right now. But yeah. And then what you can do is you can watch some YouTube videos. They sometimes explain them mm -hmm. quite, quite well. Good. So it's Saturn square moon, okay. uh, Neptune squared midheaven. Saturn sextile Pluto, Jupiter con conjunct Venus, Uranus conjunct Saturn, and Neptune conjunct Ascendant.
So to me, it, it helps to take away the personal side of the depression and realize, you know, okay, this is part of a larger cycle of my life and uh, kind of removes a bit of the confusion a bit, right? Also, yeah, I didn't really realize how much of a, a big role Niger was playing in my life and also my mental health until our split up happened. And then I realized how much I was putting a lot of my own emotional turmoils and looking for him for support and dealing with my issues. And then I no, no longer had that anymore. And then he, he's been remotely distant. I'm going to see him tomorrow, thankfully. Um, but it's, yeah, I think it's really felt like a big piece of me has gone. And I was really stubborn about it and I kept pushing him away. And I, you know, I wanted that piece gone and until he was gone. I realized how, how much weight I was putting on him and how much weight he was holding that I wasn't dealing with myself. Now you have to deal with it. Well, it's, it's good to realize. It is, it is good to realize. I mean, I would call Nigel if I needed anyone to talk to you about anything. He was financial support. He was this support. He was that support. You know, he was my, my best friend. He was my hangout. He was, you know, come over. I'm not feeling very, very well. Okay, I'm coming over. What do you want? Like, you know, he was, he was at my women call in my mental health constantly. And now he's, he's not there anymore. And yeah, uh, as soon as he's been gone, I was like, oh, fuck. I don't know how to take care of myself. And I was like, I haven't been sleeping. I haven't been eating. And I was like, I have lost a lot of weight. I have not been taking care of my mental health. I haven't been writing. I haven't been you know, doing any of the hobbies that I enjoy that bring me joy. And I haven't been focusing on anything like that. Great, okay, cool. <laughs> but it's the lesson. Yeah, well, <laughs> you're probably gonna have a good clearing, you know? This is a good clearing, but it's it's hard when you're in this these depressions because it, it feels like it's gonna be forever. Like for me, when I feel like I've lost my spark or I feel really down or you know, I feel like a piece of me is gone, I don't know if I'm ever gonna that's ever gonna come back. And it's like I'm in I'm I'm stuck in I'm stuck in this darkness and I'm not sure who I'm gonna be when I come out. And that's just that's just fear of the the future and not being in the present. And also like representation of the past because really everything that is is what's happening right now and it doesn't really matter what's going on in the future and if I take care of myself and I do these things I'm not going to be in this this dark hole forever but it's this feeling of like what if I come out of it I'm just going to be this numb fucking person forever well I mean when we're in these deep depressions and in the present moment it does seem like it's always going to be that way but mm -hmm. It isn't right. I mean, I think something that the, the cycles point to is, you know, okay, there's some bigger things here and they, they are affecting you strongly, but there's some other things here. They're positive. They're coming, just coming in right now. Right. It sounds like mm -hmm. April is a big switch point for some of the more positive things coming in. So. Yeah. April's just been, April's flown by. I can't believe it's already April 15th. I feel like, it, you know, it, it was just, it was two weeks ago now. I mean, I just split. It was two weeks ago we had the big fight it was two weeks ago that everything kind of went down and then ever since then i just feel like i've been floating in this kind of like fuckery yeah i don't know i don't know i'm gonna go to cortez this weekend i'm excited about it actually um hopefully that helps something I think, yeah. I think I gotta leave Victoria. Are you gonna stay with Nigel on the boat? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm holding on for my dear life. Even if we're not together in a relationship, I, I don't I don't wanna lose that relationship completely. Well, it sounds like you're you have higher value for it. Yeah, I mean, don't know what you got to this guy. <laughs> okay, I think I, I got to get back to work a bit. I just wanted to check in. Yeah, thanks for the check in. I'm going to do, um, I'm going to look into this astrology stuff and see if it helps.
Yeah. Take care. Thanks for the chat. Okay. See you, bro. Bye.